Hello, in this video I will explain the properties of objects in uh, the robot simulator Coppelia Sim or VREP. I am Leopoldo Armesto and this video is part of a tutorial about the use of Coppelia Sim for robotic courses that I normally teach at the Polytechnic University of Valencia. The aims of the presentation are basically to describe the main properties of objects in Coppelia Sim understand the differences between a respondable and non-respondable objects as well as between dynamic and static uh, objects. Uh, to show some of the basic properties of shape and appearance uh, of an object and understand uh, visibility layers of objects and also to understand special properties of an object that will affect the way in which the simulation is performed. So, objects can be dynamic or static. A dynamic object uh, is affected by forces such as gravity, collisions between objects and other uh, restrictions uh, such as joint, uh, as we will see. On the contrary, a static object can modify its position or orientation only if we modify it manually or if we do it by code, by programming. Okay, but they do not depend on these forces. Okay, so they uh, basically allow us to implement purely kinematic simulations, which are more easy to understand. Uh, so, in addition to this, objects can also be reactive. Uh, reactive is a property which is known in, in, uh, in this simulator is, is known as respondable, and uh, basically it implies that a reactive object can react against another object, also another reactive object, if there's a collision. So, uh, here uh, I will explain uh, the object interaction map. So, uh, if you want to uh, get further information, uh, you have to follow uh, the link I, I show you below. So, um, so let's say that uh, for dynamic properties we have four possible cases. So, an object could be a static object or dynamic, but could be also at the same time respondable or non-respondable. And depending on uh, the properties of these uh, objects, they interact different uh, on each of the cases. So, for instance, uh, when we have two static objects that are non-respondable, the objects won't move, they will be static, so they won't move at all, and since they are not a uh, collision at all, or even if they uh, get into collision, they do not, do not react, because they are non-respondable. So, uh, also, we have the, ob the, uh, the case in which uh, the objects, uh, both of objects are static, but one of them is respondable. In this case, because of the objects are uh, static, they don't move, so they don't react. And uh, there's another or a third case in which one of the objects is dynamic. In this case, uh, the, ob the dynamic object will move, let's say, with the gravity falling down, okay? And uh, if the other, uh, and if that object is non-respondable, means that whenever it enters into a collision with another object, it will not react. So if it's falling, for instance, imagine that you have a dynamic object but not reactive, just on top of another object. Then once it's falling down and passes through, it will, it will pass through the other object because it does not react. It does not uh, generate a reaction force. And the case in which both objects will actually physically interact will be the case in which, for instance, the objects are uh, respondable. Uh, it could happen, for instance, one of them is dynamic, the other one is static, but basically if the dynamic object is falling down and both of them are respondable, then they will react based on the principles uh, of the third uh, Newton's laws, action and reaction. And uh, also objects have uh, special properties, and these is, properties are very important uh, in order to control the way we uh, execute our simulation. Specifically, the most relevant, uh, re uh, relevant uh, properties are the collidable property, uh, which means that if we activate this property, then an object with, uh, with this property active will uh, enter into a list of objects that can collide which means that it will be used uh, in order to detect possible collisions with other objects, but it does not imply that they will react. They are basically used for uh, other uh, 
uh, calculation purposes, uh, purposes like path planning uh, in order to compute collision free paths. Okay, so these uh, algorithms or these modules will try to find or the, the, uh, know which objects are collidable and which are not collidable and only the collidable uh, objects will be considered for their uh, 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 computation. Also, uh, a detectable object will be uh, detected by proximity sensors. So if we activate this uh, property means that pro proximity uh, sensors such as ultrasonic, laser or infrared can detect the, the, uh, the object and will provide a distance uh, uh, of that object to the robot or to the sensor indeed. Okay, so another property will be the renderable uh, property which means that uh, these objects can be seen by um, vision sensors. So if you activate this uh, property then uh, you have a camera in which you can do some processing and only this, uh, the objects with this uh, property active will be actually rendered on that camera and then can be detected. And finally uh, the measurable property will be used for uh, the minimum distance calculation module which is useful in uh, or convenient in, uh, in, in certain uh, cases specifically to avoid collisions too. So also uh, objects have some shape uh, properties especially uh, related with the geometry and uh, we can modify for instance uh, the, the scale of an object so we can scale it and, uh, and make it bigger or smaller and also we can adjust the color and even to provide a texture to, uh, to an object to modify its appearance. And finally, uh, what we can do in the, in the properties of an object is to control the visibility layers. The software has uh, 16 visibility, visibility layers that allow us to show or hide objects during the simulation. So the first eight layers are usually used to show, let's say, nice objects, which are usually more complex objects like, such as meshes or convex objects and they are usually um, um, uh, uh, used by the graphic engine which is in, in charge of displaying them in, uh, in our simulation. And the following eight layers are usually used to show simple objects and they are part of our simulation mostly affecting our physics engine. Usually we can here include pure objects or maybe convex objects too and also joints. So these objects are usually, high, are usually hidden uh, on, a, on our simulation and this can be controlled uh, using a global mask. So the global mask by default uh, uses the first eight layers as you can see here active but we can invert that and we can see the objects that are on the other layers so we can see what's behind the simulation. Okay so we will see all these properties in, uh, on the next video. Thank you very much.